Right. So thank you everybody for joining us this morning on, at least for those living in the U.S., is a very <laughs> stressful, stressful time. Still just a waiting game, you know. The coffee. Yeah, nobody's been getting any sleep. <laughs> so we're going to try to power through and keep the smiles, as Joe Biden keeps saying, keep the faith. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Um, so thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, really excited that Kate has uh, decided to join us to be able to give us her wisdom and expertise. Um, just to give a little background on her, uh, she has 20 years of experience in graphic design and communications, and she's developed expertise in branding, uh, concepting, art direction, client management, and team leadership. Her expansive background includes brand identity, web design, consumer and BTV print, and digital communications, infographics, and more. So she is the CEO of Owl's Head Solutions, um, which is its own, and I'll let her explain it because this is this is a brand new also world for me. Um, so I'll bring her, <laughs> bring her I'll list. I'll spend a little bit of time on it, no worries. <laughs> Um, so she's an award-winning designer. She sees her role through a wider lens, focusing on big picture thinking and problem solving. So as Alice Head has grown, um, she has used her creative capabilities, developing an overarching vision for the agency and realizing that vision by building and leading remarkable teams in design, development, and client services. She has developed a passion for and continues to be motivated, motivated by her team's work in the healthcare space with a focus on health advocacy, public health, and se se sexual and reproductive health. Alice Head Solutions offers clients full-scale design and technological solutions to any creative communications challenge, healthcare focused or otherwise, known for out-of-the-box thinking, smart design, cutting edge technological solutions, outstanding execution and close and enduring client relationship, Kate and Al's head's mantra is simple. We can always find the perfect solution. So with that, <laughs> I hand it over to Kate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Uh, thanks for having me speak today. It's really an honor to be here. Um, today we're talking about branding from authenticity to consistency. And let me just go ahead and share my screen at this point. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Am I able to share mine? I know I'm in a, okay, hold on. But anyway, um, yes, so branding from authenticity to consistency, and um, I'm always happy to talk branding. I hope you'll find this, discuss, this discussion helpful wherever your career may take you. Still can't share my screen though. <laughs> Do you see the, the button at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Mm, let me try this one. Good. Yeah, thank you. All right, can everybody see that? Okay. All right, so anyway. As she mentioned, my name is Kate Green. I'm the president and CEO at Owl's Head Solutions. Um, and I'm also an intersectional feminist, a mother, a wife, an artist, and an eccentric chicken lady in no particular order. Um, here are some of the chickens that I've started raising this year um, because, you know, COVID, if you're gonna be trapped at home for a year or, or more, um, you might as well pick up a new hobby, right? Um, anyway, I started out as a graphic designer. I went freelance um, after being the creative director at uh, L'Occitane, which is a French beauty company where I serviced 125 boutiques um, nationwide in the US. Um, and then I went on to grow my freelance business and launch uh, Owl's Head in 2012. And so I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about Owl's Head, who we are and what we do, just so you we could put a, you know, this discussion in a little bit more perspective. So, um, so Owl's Head is an award-winning creative agency specializing in branding, design, and development for private sector clients, professional services clients, such as PR agencies, for example, um, and public sector and, and NGO clients. So this means on any given day, 
Uh, we can be working to launch a brand or a website for an emerging biopharma client. Uh, we can be working on an annual report for the Population Council. Uh, we could be doing fact sheets for the CDC. We could be launching a vegan skincare brand from Brooklyn um, and also an advertising campaign for the Maine Department of Agriculture. So th these are just a few of the projects we've done in, in the past year. So it really runs the gamut, um, but we do have a, a fairly heavy healthcare focus. So here are just some of the clients and brands we've worked with. Um, some of the work that we do that we're most proud of is with research institutions who address critical health and development issues and gender equity. So I just wanted to sh start by showing a few projects so you can get an idea of like the type of, of work we do and the type of graphics we create. And then we'll, we'll dig in more to the, the meat of this talk, which is about branding. So this is a campaign we did for the 65th anniversary of the Population Council. And they're a research organization um, whose mission is to allow couples to plan their families and chart their futures. And they also empower girls to protect themselves and have a say in their own lives. Imagine that. Um, fun fact, they invented the IUD. So thank you, Population Council. And here are two of the annual reports we've done for them in the past few years. Um, they include executive summaries of uh, everything they've accomplished in that year. And they um, include several infographics to show the progress they've made. We also um, work within gender health. They also work in family planning, maternal health, and gender equity. And this is their most prominent program called Where's the Family Planning? So we've done several social graphics and infographics for this campaign. Um, the Touch Foundation, their mission is to strengthen healthcare in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so we did a white paper for them on how to access emergency transportation and how that's improved maternal health. Um, and we created this uh, white paper through one of our PR clients who also specializes in healthcare, Evoke, client, uh, Evoke Kine is the name of the company and uh, they're a really fantastic partner. So I wanna give them credit as well. And then finally, um, for the CDC, we've done a comprehensive redesign and design system, um, sort of like branding for the CDC's National Center for HIV AIDS, Viral Hepatitis, STD and TB prevention department. Try saying that three times fast. Um, but this is just a small subset of the work we do. And you can check out more at our website, which is owlsheadsolutions.com. So uh, enough about me and Owl's Head. Uh, what I want to talk today about is branding and how to find your authentic brand. Um, so I just want to start with a simple question with a not so simple answer and feel free to unmute yourselves or type in the chat if you have any ideas, but I'm going to put the question out to you. Uh, what is branding? Does anybody have any thoughts about that? I can't see the chat, so I'm not sure if anybody's saying anything, but if not, that's okay. That means I have an audience I'm going to be able to teach a lot to today. <laughs> I'm just going to take a guess. Okay. Something about building your identity. Yes. It has everything to do with building your identity. But um, if you ask 10 different designers. Sorry, can you say that again? Having a unique and easily identifiable brand. Yes, that's really important. And that's why it needs to be authentic. And so honestly, if you ask 10 different designers what branding is, you're gonna get 10 different answers. And that's because um, what we think, you know, what, what branding has become is really evolved. Um, and as, as it's become much more sophisticated as we engage with our audience at a multi-channel level. Um, and so by that, I mean, in person, in print, outbound and inbound. So the answer really becomes branding is shaping perception. Um, and so what this really means is your brand isn't 
actually what you're telling your audience it is. Your brand is whatever your customers say it is. And you better hope they're saying good things. <laughs> um, because your brand is not really just a logo or a font or a color scheme, which is, you know, one of the arenas where we help our clients discover their branding. Um, but it's the subtotal of all of the experience that your customers have with your business. It's what you make them feel. Um, and graphics are really just a part of that. So to drive this home, I wanted to play a little game that I hope will go well and not backfire called Name That Brand. Um, and again, feel free to unmute yourself uh, or type it in the chat if you, if you have an answer. But I'm gonna describe an experience um, and you can tell me who you think I'm talking about, what brand you think I'm talking about, okay? So I walk into this shop and I'm immediately hit by an amazing aroma. I find a table to put my laptop down on because I plan to get some work done while I'm here. And as I walk up to the counter to make my really overcomplicated order, um, I either hear that band I'm listening to right now that I didn't think anybody else knew about, or I don't know what I'm listening to, but it's really eclectic and awesome. And I could buy the CD at the counter. Irene, you know? Starbucks. Yes, Starbucks. So um, I could have just showed you this as well, right? And you would have known. Um, so, but the difference here is that the, the cup is just a symbol of the brand, but you already knew from the experience I described who I was talking about because Starbucks, they're experts at making the Starbucks ex experience feel the same worldwide. I'm gonna do one more. Okay, so I walk into this restaurant, relieved that even though the parking lot is full, there are several lines, so this should go very quickly. I order a meal that's only a few bucks and I get out of there right away. I'm relieved because I'm on my lunch break and I'm in a hurry or because I've got my kids with me, I gotta get back on the road and feed those kids in the car. Anybody know? Mm -hmm. I would say McDonald's. McDonald's, yes. <laughs> Um, and I could have shown you this, right? Um, McDonald's owns this packaging and they own, kind of own the red and yellow combination. It's like a very small color palette, but they, they like drive it home worldwide. Um, but uh, again, these are just symbols of the brand and you already knew what restaurant I was talking about uh, because of the experience I described. Like I know McDonald's is going to give me quick, cheap food, and there'll be one like literally every town I stop in. Um, so while the logos and colors um, and aesthetic rules are important, there's a lot more to a brand than that. Um, and branding is really about shaping that perception. Everything we do to shape that perception is really what branding is. So how does this apply to you? If you're thinking of branding, or rebranding your own business, or maybe you're tasked with being the brand guardian, which is something we'll go into a little bit later. The lesson here really is um, that you need to be authentic with your brand, because if you're not authentic from the start, you won't be able to like holistically hold that brand together from all of the different touch points between you and your customers. They just won't believe you. Um, so it comes from keeping your promises to them. It comes from earning their trust that your brand will be its best at every point of contact to deliver what they expect from you. Um, and this trust is really what leads people to using, choosing your brand again and again. So you need to be able to believe in your brand and your staff needs to be able to believe in your brand as well. And that really comes from the top down. So, you know, whenever I'm watching webinars, I really appreciate when people give me something very tactical that I can work with. And so that's what I'm going to spend some time doing right now is I want to go over a creative brief, um, which contains a series of questions that we would ask a client who's looking for a new brand. So if this is you, you know, before you reach out to any creatives to embark upon your brand, I highly suggest you try to answer the questions in this brief. And I will 
share it with you um, in a minute uh, over chat. I'll give you a link to it. Um, try to try to answer these questions because they really they allow you to soul search and you'll be much more prepared to have a, a productive conversation with your agency. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to stop sharing while I find <laughs> this document. It used to be part of my presentation. One second. Mm -hmm. One second, sorry. I had this already yesterday and then I changed something in my PDF and then forgot to include this again. Here we go. So create a brief. It's not in here. All right, I'm gonna pull it up from these notes. Back to meeting, share screen. Okay. Sorry about that. Can everybody see this creative brief at this point? I think you have to reshare. I have to reshare, sorry. Back to meeting, share screen. <sighs> share. Okay, sorry. Can everybody see that now? Yep. Okay. So. Can everybody still see that? Okay. This is awkward. Sorry. <laughs> By the way, this is my first webinar. Um, and I don't quite have the technology down under my belt. So here we go. Learning process for all of us. It is. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, um, this is a creative brief. Basically the point of this creative brief, like I said, is um, for you, um, it allows you to kind of soul search and really, and really start to solidify what you think your brand is and what values your brand should encompass. Um, for an agency, it helps us to have a roadmap for any of the creative um, discoveries that we're going to do along the way. You want to make sure that the client and the agency are on the same page. And so this document is kind of like, you can always point back to this document and say, okay, well, the direction we're going in here, it really doesn't match back to your values. And um, so this is kind of like a hard and fast set of rules to make sure everybody's really going in the right direction. So do I need to zoom in on this or can you all see? I don't know if I can zoom in because this is from Chrome. There we go. Um, what so project inspiration? Just sort of backing up. What idea or event inspired the need for this project? So whether you're branding for the first time or or this is a rebrand, you know why are you thinking about rebranding? Uh, business summary. Please provide a concise description of the business. Um, whether you're a, a service selling a service, you're selling a product, and then company values it. This is really what sets the tone for the rest of the questionnaire because your company values, as we've discussed, um, you, you need to be authentic in what your company values are. And then every, uh, every touch point along uh, your customer's journey with your brand really needs to match back to these. So this is a super, super important piece of, um, you know, what to, what to think about before you start embarking upon your brand. Brand vision. Uh, what do you want this new brand to communicate? Corporate profile. What product or services do you sell? Uh, what does what do you do well? What trends or issues are affecting your industry? What are your short-term goals versus what are your long-term goals? 
it's important to think about your audience. So who is the target audience? Um, do they, what's their occupation, their age range, any other relevant information? Um, what do they care about? How is the audience currently reached? If that's applicable. Uh, perception, tones, and guidelines. You know, what do they currently think and feel about you, if applicable? And what do we want them to think and feel about you? What adjectives can be used to describe the way that you should be perceived? Communication strategy. Um, what's the overall message you're trying to convey to your target audience? Uh, are you cost effective? Are you secure? Are you reliable, efficient? Uh, what are the most important tenants there? Competitive positioning. Um, it's important to know who your competitors are so that we can really find ways to set you apart. Um, so a list of your closest competitors is always appreciated. Uh, what makes you unique compared to your competition? Um, we usually ask to provide URLs for three companies that compete in the same space um, that we can use for reference. Design considerations. Uh, are there any existing design parameters to abide by? This is mostly relevant if you've already got a brand. If there's any existing brand style guides, which is the next thing we're going to go over, is there a defined color palette or can we explore? Uh, same with fonts. Um, is there an existing photo library? Uh, photography is one of the biggest hurdles um, with branding uh, because if there's not a budget for um, a photographer to be hired, you know, you're working with stock, um, which tends to look like stock, unless your creative team can be very creative <laughs> about making it look more unique to your brand. So it's important to kind of uh, understand what, what resources we have available. Um, in the case of Owl's Head, for example, we don't use stock, we use custom illustrations for everything. Um, I have a very talented illustrator on my team, so I'm, I'm able to do that. Um, metrics. What's your particular metric for measuring success? So this is an important thing to think about. How are you going to kind of measure? Um, and it's important for your agency to think about. For example, um, if you are going to be uh, really um, prominent in social media, you know, if that's if that's one of your key marketing tools, we want to make sure that your brand looks and feels approachable so that you can have a more conversational you know, brand on social media. So it's important to understand that. Targeted messages, targeted message, state a single-minded word or phrase that will appropriately describe the brand once, once it's launched. So that really causes you to think, okay, let's, all, let's think about all my values. Let's think about all my target audience. Let's think about, you know, what it is I'm trying to say that, what is that one word or phrase that's really gonna capture that? Um, and then just any additional information. So I'm gonna stop sharing again for a second. because so I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up another document. Um, to go over basically how, um, once, you, once you take all of this time to discover who your brand is, how do you keep that consistent? And the answer is brand guidelines, which I'm gonna to try to pull up rather than my, um, rather than my other document here. Here we go. I'm just trying to pull up the right Chrome thing. Hold on one second. Share. Okay, can you all see this brand guidelines? Okay. So basically, um, you know, a lot of a lot of companies they go through the process of branding, um, and then you know they take all of this time and effort. They have their brand under their belt, but then they start to hire employees and and you know get, get their brand out there. And the question becomes, how do you keep this? Um, you know, how do you keep this consistent? Um, 
So brand guidelines, I don't know if anybody's seen these before, but this is, this is you know, the, the best first step um, in, in trying to keep everybody on the same page. So this is um, brand guidelines that we did for one of our clients, Kine. And I've seen brand guidelines uh, booklets like that are a hundred or more pages. And I've seen brand guidelines that are two pages. Um, it really depends on the size of your company. If you're a global company and how many demonstrations of all of your various marketing materials you want uh, to feature in the brand guidelines. So for, for my clients, you know, this particular set of brand guidelines is I think sufficient. Um, as they grow, you can always add to it, but what's in here are really just the bones of the brand to give people the overall flavor uh, and direction. So one thing I wanna mention, so this is just table of contents, but I don't know if you could see it here. I wonder if I could zoom in again. Okay. So they have um, what we call a, a brand guardian. So it says, for more information, please contact Michael Grella. Um, he basically is tasked with any marketing materials going out the door. He, he needs to make sure that they abide by these rules for the sake of consistency. So if you can have a brand guardian on your team, I think that's really helpful. Um, otherwise things start to get um, a little loose, I guess, with what you're putting out there in terms of consistency. So the first thing we wanna start with really, cause it sets the tone for the, uh, all of the visuals is the messaging. So here we, we show the tagline, we show the mission statement and the vision. We give a list of company values and we talk about brand tone. So every graphic that you're gonna see in the rest of this document kind of goes back to what I was saying with your values. It goes back to what these tenants of the brand are. And then of course we have a boilerplate which needs to remain consistent across their marketing materials. It's like your elevator pitch essentially. It's what captures captures everything in a, in a quick way. Logo, um, it's important to let people know how to use it. Um, so you wanna think about how it's used on a light background versus a dark background. Maybe you co you're co-branding and you wanna figure out how the, the, those rules would work. These are what not to do with the logo. You know, don't change the color, don't make it illegible, don't change the font or squish it. Color palette, color palette's important. It's nice to have a primary versus a secondary color palette. Primary is, you know, the main colors that you should use within the brand and secondary is usually used more sparingly, but we tend to like to have um, brighter pops for the secondary colors because you can use those to highlight key messages or buttons on a website, for example, to really draw the eye. Typography, meaning what are the actual fonts that you're using for your brand and how do you keep those consistent? Um, so we do get into the weeds a little bit as designers, um, you know, subheads need to be bolded and all caps and the tracking needs to be 25, meaning the spacing in between. Um, headlines need to be all caps with 25, but Roboto light. So we think about how all of these fonts are gonna be used together and we try to come up with rules to maintain consistency. Photography, we kind of touched on this already, but um, you know, you want your photography to feel sort of consistent. So we make rules on, you know, how are portraits shot for leadership? How is their work presented? The work should be presented on a, a gray background. How, how, is, how do we use atmospheric shots versus how do we use shots of the actual employees? And so when you take all of these things and, oh, and iconography as well, sorry. Iconography has become really important for brands because um, infographics and such have become so ubiquitous that it's important to have icons that your brand can pull from, um, but you wanna remain consistent in those. So then we kind of, we say, okay, here's all, those are all the building blocks 
for the brand symbols. Um, how do we put all of those together? And so here we kind of talk about that a bit. You know, icons are used sparingly, but they're used with those pops of color. Um, you know, how how's all this coming together? Images of the brand of the employees at the brand are are always kind of monochromatic. Here's just an extension of that. And then we get into demonstrations. And this is where you can really get a long set of guidelines from a big global organization. We just do a few demonstrations here. Um, but, you know, taking all of those pieces, how do they come together to create business cards, for example? And then this is um, their capabilities presentation, which is typically PowerPoint. This is another PowerPoint template, basically. Um, how does it all come together on the website? And then voice and tone. Um, you know, we want to make sure it's in there again to make sure that not only your visuals are consistent, but the voice and the tone that you're using across your brand is also consistent. Um, you don't want to have a conservative looking brand with a voice that just seems out of place and is very, I don't know, loud or modern or edgy or something like that. Uh, and that is a good example of brand guidelines or brand standards. So I gotta get back to my original presentation here. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Look at that. That was that was faster. So um, now I just got to change the page. There we go. So in closing, <laughs> uh, branding, again, is whatever your customers say it is, um, because it's how you make them feel. And the brand symbols, such as your logo, your color palette, your fonts, um, you know, those are just a piece of it. Uh, they're really important. They should be expertly crafted. They should be well considered, but they're not the whole story. Um, so be authentic when you're creating your brand. Um, be consistent at every touch point and brand guidelines will help you do this. So now I can open it up to some questions. Um, anybody would like to ask me anything? And maybe introduce yourself before you do, just so I can say hello. And I'm going to check the chat too, um, so I can post. I just have to find the chat, so I can post a link to the creative brief which I have here. I have a question. Yeah, great. So, I feel like a lot of organizations tend to fall into the same pitfalls in a lot of ways um, when it comes to branding. In your experience, what's been, I guess, the biggest biggest problems that they face and, and how you shape to overcome those? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of our um, PR agencies that we work with, they struggle with, um, limited brand guidelines. And, and by that, I mean, so like when we're working with like AstraZeneca, for example, or Janssen or something like that, they have very, very strict brand guidelines. But after a while, everyone kind of wants to start to break those because they're so inflexible that it gets to be a little bit boring when they want something a little bit fresh. And so when, when we're coming up with brand guidelines, I like to try to make them a bit flexible so that people can branch off, but all, all within the same rules. So iconography, for example, you know, we started with those like 25 icons or whatever was on that page. They could make more icons, but they should follow the same rules. So it should be like a solid background with a white icon in the middle, for example. Um, you know, overlays, we want to use overlays in the photography in the example I showed you, but does it have to be 
one big swash of overlay of the same color. No, uh, it could be some kind of collage of different colors if you want. And you saw, we, I don't know if you caught it, but we did a circle cut out in one of them. So, you know, for me, it's like brand guidelines are important. They keep you honest. They keep you in the same family, but they should not be so stringent that there's no room for creative freedom because after a couple of years of using the same demonstrations, people are going to want to break out of that a little bit. So I'm constantly having that conversation with my clients. Well, you know, this is going against, I know you want this, but it's going against the brand guidelines and then be like, ah, it's okay. It's used internally anyway. And I'll be like, okay, <laughs> you know, whenever you want, but flexible guidelines can avoid that conversation. And on that note, what's been one of the coolest things, innovative things that you've seen? In terms of brand guidelines? Just just in your in your field and in terms of like branding and creative thinking and, and design, like where somebody's really take, taking something on and it's really it's really been beneficial. Um, I think that digitally, um, the way that people are starting to use the web, the way that we're starting to understand how to use the web rather than just like one long scrolling page, doing things more interactive um, is the future, you know, uh, especially as, you know, with COVID and everything that's happened this year, we're all learning how to basically work in our computers. Like that's our office at this point, right? And so, um, you know, I think that what people are doing from a digital perspective is really going to expand. One good example of that is um, like conventions or conferences, you know, um, you don't have to be in person anymore, but we found a way to make them interesting and interactive and you could still have your sponsors and people could still learn about them. And actually it's kind of cooler because now I can jump around into like different um, different talks and stuff. If one's not working for me, I don't have to like slink out the back, you know, for example, but, uh, you know, so any kind of interactive online exchange or experience, I think is, um, you know, there's, is ripe for innovation. I'm just going to look at some of the chat in case I've missed any questions here. I've got it open now. When the US catches a cold, everyone sneezes. Thank you. No one's getting sleep this week, no. Uh, Irene needs to go on Jeopardy, yes. Um, so I did post uh, a link to that creative brief um, now that I found the chat. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. Happy to answer any additional questions. Irene, you have any questions for me? <laughs> I actually do. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to ask, but I think I got there. So um, I recently started a blog and I'm also using social media also to share things related to, to my work. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if you have any specific piece of advice for people who like me want to work on their personal branding rather than organizational branding. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if there's one thing I've learned and, and is that um, when it comes to social media, and I'm trying to get better at this myself, um, but what we tend to do is like, you know, what it used to be was you have to have great content, you have to have great content. So we'd spend all of our days like looking for great articles to share. And, you know, that's important because people are going to want to follow you. But what's really driving like, um, what's really driving people to love a brand at this point is a more conversational feel. So if we tend to push content out there and just assume it goes into the ether and nobody's really going to respond like, oh, we did this interesting thing. Check it out. But you wouldn't do that like if you were in a networking situation face to face, right? You would want to converse with the person that you're talking to. You just wouldn't be just talking about yourself the whole time. Um, and so engagement, I, I would suggest engaging with your audience in a more conversational feel. Um, 
and you know, a response from you, if they respond to your post is going to mean a lot more to them. And then you're going to have, you know, a deeper relationship with your audience. So that would be my biggest suggestion is think about ways that you can, um, have a more conversational relationship on social media. We're all humans, right? We have to remember that we're not talking to the computer. We're not talking to the robot. We're talking to other people. So. And I know there's a lot of social media gurus on here <laughs> that we can, we can point to, but I know like I tend to like just tag a lot of people, like people that I'm targeting, people that I know, just so that like, it, that's one way of grabbing them in the conversation, right? So like social media is the even, you know, playing field now for a lot of people. So people that you would have never dreamed of, you know, speaking to, like even the, the prime ministers, whatever it is, you can now tag them. Yeah. Some of them, you know, they will actually run their own accounts. They will see it. And you will be surprised that they will like respond back. So use it, definitely use it. Yeah, and, and everything that you are putting out there, again, needs to kind of match back to that image you're trying to portray of your brand, authenticity. They will find you out if you're not authentic, as we've learned recently with Women Deliver, which I'm not going to get into, but Jessica knows what I mean. <laughs> they will find you out. So. Thank you so much for answering my question. Yeah, of course. We've got a few more minutes if anybody else has anything. Do you want to see more pictures of my chickens? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I guess we can wrap it up then, Jessica? Yeah. If no one else has any questions, um, I, I, there was a lot to digest. There was a lot of documents um, that I'll ask. Uh, Kate that we can share so everybody can take a, a time to like really reflect on them um, and that way you can come back um, and ask her any like more concrete questions that you can use. Um, yeah so let me put my email address in the chat too. This is this had a little bit more technical uh, information to it so I know that it takes you know some people are different learners whether they're visual or hearing and so take take the time to digest um, and yeah and just to say everybody we're Keep your head held high. I know it's a rough time for a lot of us. And as um, somebody mentioned earlier, you know, we feel it everywhere in the world, no matter where you are. So take the time to take a good walk, meditate, breathe, <laughs> go find some chickens. <laughs> and get my chickens. Yeah. And now the lockdowns have, have begun again. And, you know, it, we're really, we're really feeling it. Um, and I'm really glad that we have this ability to be able to connect with one another, whether it's through our, our online webinars, through social media, and just continuing to, to lift each other up in these tough times. Um, there's, there's bright lights ahead. We may be getting the first female African-American VP. I mean, so don't forget about the hope. Oh, wait, we have a question. Oh, good question. One more question for you, Kate. How do I launch a new product or service line so that it fits with my existing brand? Um, I suppose that would depend on what your existing brand is and what their values are. Um, Um, I, I think I would need a little bit more context <laughs> to be able to answer that question. Is there something specific? I know I launched a new product or service that it fits with my existing brand. I think it's about alignment, more about, but I don't know. Um, I launched a new product or service. That you want to come in and, and fill us in a little bit more? Ruth. Hi. So um, it's, it's just something I'm thinking about in my head. So um, it, it, it's so how do you let's see? Because as an individual, I have like so many things going on. And the question is, how do I brand myself differently? That one that the stuff that I'm working on doesn't clash 
the ideals and the identities are separate but still the same. I don't know if that makes sense at all. Mm -hmm. um, so are you you're saying that you have staff and you're trying to figure out how to ensure that everybody's on the same page? Oh, I met staff, staff that I'm working on. So different brands that I'm working on, but they all kind of fall under the umbrella of me being uh, the person that is creating them. Yes. Um, what happens is what has happened for me is that once I start to work on one thing, then the other one or two things lose out because I'm then concentrating on just the thing. And then I'm thinking, oh, I need to go back and pick it up. Um, as someone that juggles um, brand identities or rather, what can I say, positioning myself in different ways just so that my ideas, I mean, so that the stuff that I'm working on is unique to me, yes, but it still doesn't overlap. It's still different in a way. Okay, so you're talking about different verticals, essentially, um, you know, which is one way to tackle it. Um, for example, at OHS, um, we, we mostly work in healthcare, but when I'm trying to pitch OHS to someone who's not healthcare, I don't really talk about the fact that we most work with healthcare. So I found ways on my new website, which is I was hoping would be launched today, but is not, um, to be able to filter based on the audience I'm trying to speak to. So I'm not always speaking to the same audience, right? So I, I do adjust the way that I talk about what we do, um, but the values are the same across them all. And so I'm not sure if that, if that applies to what you're talking about, but um, you know, if you've got two very, so back, going back to the website, if somebody from healthcare calls and they want to know what we do, I've got it pre-filtered for a healthcare vertical. I say, okay, here's all the healthcare stuff. And it's like a special URL that only shows healthcare um, versus e-commerce versus just sort of general, right? Still under the same umbrella of Owl's Head, still have the same values, but different verticals. If your verticals are very, very different and you feel like you're gonna be able to better market them with different values per, then you can just do sub brands or you can, I would just suggest having multiple separate brands, um, which is another thing Owl's Head might do. We're trying to launch a, like an e-commerce site with the artwork that my team does. And, you know, we're all, we're all feminists and we really want to have like a feminist art website, but then sort of a more general one and then maybe a healthcare one. I'm not going to bring them all under the same website. I'm going to have three separate under Tangram Trade, which is going to be the umbrella company so that I can more, um, it really helps to have a specialty or a niche. It just becomes a lot easier to start to sell to a specific audience and address that specific audience than trying to capture everything, um, especially as a design agency, for example. Um, when I go, you know, healthcare specifically, those particular clients are very conservative and they want to know that you do healthcare. And if you don't do healthcare, they're probably not going to hire you. But it also makes my job easier to say, okay, who are the healthcare clients? Who are the healthcare PR agencies? I'm going to specifically go after them. It's a lot easier than just going after a general company and showing them generally what we do. It's a much harder sell. So if I've got like an in with the healthcare piece and I align on that vertical with them, it makes it a lot easier. I hope, I hope that helps answer your question. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. Great. Great. Any other questions? Otherwise, I ask you all to just take a big inhale <laughs> and then exhale and then uh, just everybody's going to be in my thoughts, my prayers of everything that everybody's going through right now. Just keep your head up. And remember, like I was just saying earlier, like the hope, the hope is there. So the worry may be there, but the hope is there. Um, and we will see you all very soon. Uh, we will follow up with all the materials. Um, and if you have any other questions, I know Kate sent her 
her email in the chat. So thank yeah. you all for being here. Yes, thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you.